SCP-001 Proposal 4 The Lock QNTMS's Proposal Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-001 is to be kept locked out with all data pertaining to it inside the primary archival vault on sublevel 1 on Site 10. The vault is custom manufactured reinforced concrete and steel. Vertical octagonal prism. See Appendix U for full schematics. With a 2,000 kilogram, 0.9 meter thick time locked access portal in the ceiling, the time locking schedule should be classified and available only to Dr. Y. Mirsky. Access is conditional on three factor authorization, e.g., keycard plus fingerprint plus pass phase. SCP-001 is among the safest artifacts in the Foundation's possession, and these measures are primarily intended to prevent theft. Description SCP-001 is a smooth, black, perfectly ellipsoidal onyx gemstone with a modded white pattern wrapped around its exterior, encompassing its equator and both poles, is a complex and layered fractal filigree of gold metal. The gold is sculptured into broad strokes at what is now usually agreed to be the lower or south pole of the object, but with increasing latitude, the pattern becomes progressively more intricate. Near the north pole, also the lock or singularity, the pattern complexity progresses beyond the capability of local or electronic beam microscopes to resolve. Further investigation is pending advances in microscopy technology. The gemstone continuously emits a small quantity of thermal radiation in the microwave range. As a result, the gold filigree is warm to the touch. The white modded areas emit fractionally more radiation than the black onyx areas. Other than this, SCP-001 is totally inert. It is opaque to all forms of electromagnetic and hard radiation, and so far indestructible. See log for Project Pluto. Its onyx gold composition is just from visual inspection, since the taking of samples for chemical analysis has proven impossible. Project Pluto Master Log The following experiments have failed to open SCP-001. Conventional lock picking. Brute force, assault with hammer, chisel, sledgehammer, bolt cutters, welding torch, bandsaw, etc. Sustained heating to 5,000 degrees centigrade in industrial furnace. Artifact reflected all thermal energy and did not increase in temperature. Direct application of an industrial cutting laser. Artifact reflected all energy again. Compression in vice. Car crusher. Hydraulic diamond face press. All destroyed. Application of corrosive acids and other highly oxidizing compounds. No reaction. Detonation of plastic and solid explosives up to 0.5. KT, TNT equivalent at point-blank range, no effect. Detonation of 15 KT, TNT equivalent atomic warhead at point-blank range, no effect. Project Pluto is ongoing with the full support of Foundation resources. Dr. Mirsky. SCP-001 Acquisition Report the earliest record of SCP-001 is the handwritten journal of the minor Scottish aristocrat Sir Edward Young, 1611 to 1677 A.D. As was customary at the time, Young kept a cabinet of curiosities, a small room of artifacts of undetermined provenance, such as sculptures, preserved creatures, and trinkets. Young's journal includes references to his acquisition in 1654 AD, a bounded jewel of onyx and filigree gold of finales beyond rational intangement. While traveling across the Mesopotamian desert, the journal indicates that SCP-001 was found buried in the ruins of a bitter, baffled place older than days, or what Young took to be a temple to the fearsome death god. SCP-001 was found encased in stone at the center of four enormous runic stones. Young's journal includes a sketch of the most readable sides of the most well-preserved stone, but he was unable to read the runes or find a scholar who could translate them. 
Young's account of his journey to the location of the rune is incomplete. It has not yet been located. Young's elections of curious providences lay in storage for several centuries after he died. In 1805, his descendants donated SCP-001 to the Scottish National Museum in Edinburgh. The curators of the museum regarded SCP-001 as an ancient, fragile, and priceless example of ancient Sumerian metalworking. They therefore failed to discover its anomalous warmth, its indestructibility, or its impossible microscopic scale construction. They were, however, able to identify the runes in Young's sketch as Sumerian cuneiform circa 3400 BC. Only a partial translation was available, which was, with loss and blank, we, I, blank, a pecket, on this ending finality, blank, joy plus permanence, possibly protection. Mr. McCandish, who performed the translation, noted, This appears to be some sort of incantation or spell of containment. Apakash is the name of whatever is imprisoned within the gemstone. SCP-001 was finally placed on a semi-permanent display in 1949. In 2003, Foundation staff observed the modded white patterns on the surface of SCP-001, resembled the cosmic microwave background, a pattern of microwaves encompassing the entire observable universe, as mapped by NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Probe earlier that year. Closer inspection showed the two patterns to be identical. SCP-001, along with Barrett Young's journal, was immediately purchased by Foundation Front Organization and transferred to Site 10, where Dr. Q. Hack and Dr. Y. Mursky performed initial routine analysis. Research continues under the auspices of Dr. Mirsky, Dr. Hack having recently left the Foundation. Young's journal included several detailed sketches of SCP-001. In one of the sketches, a small ornate object resembling a key is shown fitting into its north pole. The key has not been recovered.